Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Please quickly make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this testing. Today we're talking about a 4.8 liter LS. I know what you're thinking, Richard, what's the big deal about that? You've run lots and lots of those, yeah, but not this one. This is one that I got from the wrecking yard at the same day that I picked up the all aluminum 5 that has worked fantastic in lots and lots of testing. You'll see more of that stuff coming up. I ran a bunch of camshafts on it, but this 4.8 liter wouldn't even run. You, if you look back, you'll see some videos where we tried to run it. I ran it without exhaust manifolds. We got flames coming out, but guess what? We didn't have flames coming out of all the holes because they all weren't hitting. This, this motor had a number of problems, so we'll go over the problems. One, it had a rocker that the guy actually tried to glue back onto the cylinder head. That's right, you heard me, a rocker he tried to glue on. What happened is he had a rocker bolt snap off. Then he tried to drill it out, so he damaged all the aluminum. That cylinder wasn't even working anymore, and yet he continued to run it. On the other side, a valve had hit the piston. Now, I don't know why or what happened, but it had a bent push rod, it had a valve that hit the piston, that bent the valve, and yet he continued to run it. So what happened is not only did he have those particular problems, but the lifter was also bad, the camshaft was also bad, both of those cylinders basically filled up with carbon deposit. I mean the port, down in the chamber, in everything. So this whole thing had to come apart and I wanted to figure out if there was a way that I could get this thing running again with all the little spare parts that I had laying around. After all, it had some good things going for it. So let's check out my efforts to get it running, get it on the dyno, and fingers crossed, make some power. So we're taking a look at problem number one. That is this. You can see the guy tried to drill out the broken stud that he had or broken bolt. We've since tapped it and we're gonna try to run it. See what happens. Okay, to really appreciate what's going on, I'm gonna pull the heads off. They've already been off. They only have a couple of bolts holding them on right now, but they've already been off because I tried to clean the ports before. But I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. One of the ports, the one that has the broken deal on it. It's all clogged up and I think that the cylinder is used. So we'll take a look at that and see what's going on and see what we gotta do to fix it. So I've already cleaned this cylinder out. It was packed full of carbon. I mean, it was stacked all the way up. Way worse than any of these. That's just kind of normal. But we've got some other things going on. You can see we've got some ugliness on the cylinder. So I'm thinking that this might be a good uh, candidate for ball hone. You know, super richy, quickie ball hone. With the thing on the dyno and everything, because, you know, I just don't care. This other side looks pretty good. A little bit of a stain down there, but again, it's a junkyard motor, so we kind of don't care. We're gonna run it and see what happens. So to give our cylinder a little bit more of a fighting chance. Wall. Well, WD. Put your WD in there. Move it all around. Hope you just don't care. This is still in there. And it's on the dyno. Now wipe this thing off. Let's see what it looks like after our cleaning. Yeah. Kind of makes me want to do all the others. Still got some stains, but cleaned up pretty well. And I'm going to blow out all the stuff down in the ring lens. Should be all good. I kind of want to clean this one now. So what I'm doing is 
<laughs> using my using my special tool, I'm jamming in the intake port, scraping all the carbon off. I'm going to take the valves out, and I think that I already cleaned them. But if not, I'm going to take them over to wire, wire wheel, clean them off, put it back together, and I think we can stick the heads on and make it run. Free them up a little bit. Yeah, we actually did already clean those. You can see we got some gunk build up on them. But I'm just gonna clean those ports out, put these back in. Let's see if we can get a good view of what's going on in here. See, you got a lot of build up in there. Try to chip away at that. Same thing on the intake. in there. So let's try to clean all that out, put the valves back in, get it going. Screwdriver porting. Just trying to clean the carbon off. you want to go and import this. But right now, just trying to get the big stuff off. Yeah, we're getting close. Gonna hit the exhaust valve just a little bit. A little bit of lapping compound. Got some pits on it. I'm just gonna do this one valve. Not even checking the other ones, because that's how I roll. So, what's going on here? I'm trying not to move it, but... Uh, it's a little wobbly, right? Oh yeah. That's bent. That's totally fine, right? Okay, we got all cleaned up, kind of. Not all cleaned up, but you know, a little bit cleaned up. Got the exhaust. I'm hoping some of this stuff just blows out of the exhaust. Man, it's hard to, let's go in this way. Let's see what we look like. Now it's just bright. I can't see nothing. Take it away. So there we go. It's all bright. It's all brightness. So what's the difference between these and this one? 
Lots of wear. Time to replace. Okay, fingers crossed, ready for the first startup. Let's see if the 4.8 comes on. Well, it looks like we have a dynograph. So not only did we actually get our much maligned and <laughs> damaged 4.8 liter running on the dyno, we actually were able to make some holes. And it seems like the thing is working actually fairly well. So we had a Gen 4 408 with all kinds of problems. We went over all of those in the video. It had stock crank, stock block, stock rods, stock flat top pistons kind of stock 706 heads that had the factory springs on and factory valves. One of them was a replacement from another head, not even the one that came with that head. Some of them still have lots of carbon deposit on them, but it had stock push rods. It had stock rockers. We did, and a stock camshaft, although this may have been the L33 camshaft. It was either an L33 or an LM7. We just stuck a cam in it, basically. But we did top it off with an Elbrock Performer RPM dual plane carbureted intake, a Holley 750, and we our ignition controller was the MSD controller designed to work on a carbureted LS application. We dialed it in timing. About 32 degrees seemed to be where this thing wanted to run. I also installed a Wilson four hole carb spacer, mostly to help optimize the air fuel mixture because with a carburetor on the dual plane, it wanted to run very rich down low and leaner up at the top. So it kind of had a leaning air fuel curve. What I did was put the carb spacer on there. And when I did, it kind of evened that out. It, it uh, leaned it out at the bottom and richened up just a little bit at the top. And so I got a fairly, a much flatter air fuel curve. Then all I had to do was adjust the jetting to get and optimize this combination. But we ended up making fairly good power. It made 300 and 
18 horsepower. I think with a little whittling, 320 was probably in sight and 332 foot-pounds of torque. So not only did it run, it actually ran fairly well, which can mean only one thing. Now I have a working 4.8 liter dyno test motor, which means I have to do more testing. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I love it when a plan comes together, but now that I have a 4.8, I'll do more testing.